Shavnam Diaries Podcast Hare Krishna, we are reading Bhagavad Gita as it is, the book by His Divine Grace, Abhaya Charanaravinda Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, Chapter 11, The Universal Form, Text 55. Matkar makrin mat paramo mat bhakta sanga varjitaha nirvaira sarva bhuteshu yah samam eti pandava. My dear Arjuna, one who engages in my pure devotional service, free from the contaminations of fruitive activities and mental speculations. He who works for me, who makes me the supreme goal of his life, and who is friendly to every living being, he certainly comes to me. Purport. Anyone who wants to approach the supreme of all the personalities of Godhead on the Krishna Loka planet in the spiritual sky and be intimately connected with the Supreme Personality, Krishna, must take this formula, as stated by the Supreme Himself. Hmm. Okay, let's repeat the formula. Engaging in pure devotional service, free from contaminations of fruitive activities and mental speculation, working for Him, making Him the supreme goal of life, and being friendly to every living being. This is actually the verse you have to memorize for Bhakti Shastri. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, let's go back to the poor part. Therefore, this verse is considered to be the essence of Bhagavad Gita. Essence. This is the essential formula of Bhagavad Gita, right? Before Prabhupada says it's a formula. Now he says it's the essence. Hmm. Wow. Okay. The Bhagavad Gita is a book directed to the conditioned souls who are engaged in the material world with the purpose of the purpose of lording it over nature and who do not know of the real spiritual life. The Bhagavad Gita is meant to show how one can understand his spiritual existence and his eternal relationship with the Supreme Spiritual Personality and to teach one how to go back home, back to Godhead. Now, here is the verse which clearly explains the process by which one can attain success in his spiritual activity. Devotional service. As far as work is concerned, one should transfer his energy entirely to Krishna conscious activities. As stated in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1.2.255 Anasaktasya vishayan yadhartha mupayunjataha nirbandha krishna sambande yuktam vairagya mujjate no work should be done by any man except in relationship to Krishna. This is called Krishna Karma. One may be engaged in various activities, but one should not be attached to the result of his work. The result should be done only for him. For example, one may be engaged in business, but to transform that activity into Krishna Consciousness, one has to do business, do business for Krishna. If Krishna is the proprietor of the business, then Krishna should enjoy the profit of the business. If a businessman is in possession of thousands and thousands of dollars, and if he has to offer all this to Krishna, he can do it. This is work for Krishna. Instead of constructing a big building for his sense gratification, he can construct a nice temple for Krishna. 
and he can install the deity of Krishna and arrange for deity service. As is outlined in the authorized books of devotional service. This is all Krishna karma. One should not be attached to the result of his work, but the result should be offered to Krishna, and one should accept as prasadam the remnants of offerings to Krishna. If one constructs a very big building for Krishna and installs the deity of Krishna, one is not prohibited from living there, but it is understood that the proprietor of the building is Krishna. This is called Krishna Consciousness. If, however, one is not able to construct a temple for Krishna, one can engage himself in cleansing the temple of Krishna. That is also Krishna Karma. One can cultivate a, a garden. Hmm. Anyone who has land in India, at least any poor man has a certain amount of land, can utilize that for Krishna by growing flowers to offer him. One can sow Tulsi plants because Tulsi leaves are very important. And Krishna has recommended this in Bhagavad Gita. Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam. Krishna desires that one offer him either a leaf or a flower, a fruit or a little water, and by such an offering he is satisfied. This leaf especially refers to the Tulsi. So one can saw Tulsi and pour water on the plant. Thus, even the poorest man can engage in the service of Krishna. These are some of the examples of how one can engage in working for Krishna. The word matparama refers to one who considers the association of Krishna in his supreme abode to be the highest perfection of life. Such a person does not wish to be elevated to the higher planets such as the moon or sun or heavenly planets or even the highest planet of this universe, Brahma Loka. Hmm. We were reading, um, what is his name? He wrote Rindavan Mahimamrita. I forgot the name of the author. Ah! The one who wrote Vrindavan Mahimamrit, he's very famous at, you know, like, very deeply heartfelt statements. And he made a statement in Navadvip. Uh, it's, it's also like Vrindavan Mahimamrit, and there is a similar. Um, wow, I forgot everything. <laughs> Anyhow, in uh, in Glories of Navadvipa, I don't remember, is it Navadvipa Shataka or is it uh, Chaitanya Chandramrita? Um, it says that uh, he's writing in Sanskrit that Svarga Loka, something like tu tu. And in translation, it means that, you know, like I spit at Svarga Loka. <laughs> tu tu. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, we don't wish to go to even Brahma Loka or Svarga Loka. He has no attraction for that. He is only attracted to being transferred to the spiritual sky. And even in the spiritual sky, he is not satisfied with merging into the glowing Brahma Jyoti effulgence. For he wants to enter the highest spiritual planet, namely Krishna Loka, Galoka Vrindavana. He has full knowledge of that planet and therefore he is not interested in any other. <laughs> As indicated by the word Mad Bhakta, he fully engages in devotional service, specifically in the nine processes of devotional engagement. Hearing, chanting, remembering, worshipping, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, offering prayers, carrying out the orders of the Lord, making friends with Him, and surrendering everything to Him. 
one can engage in all nine devotional processes, or eight, or seven, or at least one, and that will surely make one perfect. The term Sangha Varjata is very significant. One should disassociate himself from persons who are against Krishna. Not only are the atheistic persons against Krishna, but so also are those who are attached to fruitive activities and mental speculation. Therefore, the pure form of devotional service is described in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1.1.11 as follows. Anya bilashita shunyam gyana karma gyana vritam anukulyena krishnanu shilanam bhakti ruttama. In this verse, Srila Rupa Goswami clearly states that if anyone wants to execute unalloyed devotional service, he must be freed from all kinds of material contamination. He must be freed from the association of persons who are addicted to fruitive activities and mental speculation. When freed from such unwanted association and from the contamination of material desires, one favorably cultivates knowledge of Krishna. That is called pure devotional service. Hmm. Ano kulyasya sankalpa pratikulyasya varjanam. Hari Bhakti Vilasa 11.676. One should think of Krishna and act for Krishna favorably, not unfavorably. Kamsa was an enemy of Krishna's. From the very beginning of Krishna's birth, Kamsa planned in so many ways to kill him. And because he was always unsuccessful, he was always thinking of Krishna. Thus, while working, while eating, while sleeping, he was always Krishna conscious in every respect. But that Krishna consciousness was not favorable. Not favorable. And therefore, in spite of his always thinking of Krishna 24 hours a day, he was considered a demon, and Krishna at last killed him. Of course, anyone who is killed by Krishna attains salvation immediately, but that is not the aim of pure devotional service. Oh, that is not the aim of the pure devotee. The pure devotee does not even want salvation. He does not want to be transferred even to the highest planet Goloka Vrindavana. His only objective is to serve Krishna wherever he may be. Actually, it's such a... I was just... Today I was thinking that... Um, I clearly remember that um, for the past at least, you can say, 12 years. For the past 12 years. Wow. Or more, actually. Yeah, I mean, almost 13 years. Ever since I started uh, like a conscious spiritual life and listening to my Guru Maharaj's classes and different classes of devotees, and you know, I've kind of been um, fearless enough to pray to Krishna to always do everything as the way He wants everything to be, and <laughs> this kind of like took my life in very interesting places, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So actually, this is our objective, to do whatever Krishna wants us to do, to be wherever Krishna wants us to be. <laughs> That's devotee's objective. That's pure devotee's objective. And it's very, um, it's an interesting, adventurous ride to actually ride on such aspirations, I have to tell you. But you can't stop. And when you when you start, you have to continue. Only then you will. Uh, otherwise, sometimes you know if you drop midway, it, it may not be as fun as <laughs> you would want it to be. But um, not just fun, of course. 
we're not here like making some jokes. It's a serious uh, dedication and uh, it's a serious step in our life to actually do everything the way that Krishna wants. So, Jai. I highly recommend you to pray in this way that may we do whatever Krishna wants us to do, may we be wherever Krishna wants us to be. And uh, and that's actually Jai, that's actually pure devotion. Okay. Now, the last two paragraphs. A devotee of Krishna is friendly to everyone. Therefore, it is said here that he has no enemy, Nirvaira. How is this? A devotee situated in Krishna consciousness knows that only devotional service to Krishna can relieve a person from all the problems of life. He has personal experience of this and therefore he wants to introduce the system, Krishna consciousness, into human society. There are many examples in history of devotees of the Lord who risked their lives for the spreading of God consciousness. The favorite example is Lord Jesus Christ. Merry Christmas everybody, by the way. Jesus Christ, right here. Yeah, the favorite, Prabhupada writes, the favorite example. (laughs) Interesting, right? Okay, Merry Christmas to all. (laughs) He was crucified by the non-devotees, but he sacrificed his life for spreading God consciousness. Of course, it would be superficial to understand that he was killed. Mm. Similarly, in India also, there are many examples such as Haridas Thakur and Pralad Maharaj. Why such risk? Because they wanted to spread Krishna consciousness. And it is difficult, isn't it? Isn't it difficult? Isn't it incredibly difficult? I find it incredibly difficult. But (laughs) we're following in the footsteps, isn't it? A Krishna conscious person knows that if a man is suffering, it is due to his forgetfulness of his eternal relationship with Krishna. Therefore, the highest benefit one can render to human society is relieving one's neighbor from all material problems. In such a way, a pure devotee is engaged in the service of the Lord. Now, we can imagine how merciful Krishna is to those engaged in his service, risking everything for him. Therefore, it is certain that such persons must reach the supreme planet after leaving the body. Hmm. In summary, the universal form of Krishna, which is a temporary manifestation, and the form of time which devours everything, and even the form of Vishnu, four-handed, have all been exhibited by Krishna. Thus, Krishna is the origin of all these manifestations. It is not that Krishna is a manifestation of the original Vishwarupa or Vishnu. Krishna is the origin of all forms. There are hundreds and thousands of Vishnus, But for a devotee, no form of Krishna is important but the original form, two-handed Shyamsundar. In the Brahma Samhita, it is stated that those who are attached to the Shyamsundar form of Krishna The Shyamsundar form of Krishna in love and devotion can see him always within the heart and cannot see anything else. One should understand, therefore, that the purport of this 11th chapter is that the form of Krishna is essential and supreme. Jai, thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports to the 11th chapter. We have concluded the 11th chapter and tomorrow we shall begin chapter 12 entitled Devotional Service.
Thank you so much for tuning in today. The book links, previous episodes, timeline, and biography of the author can be found on shravanamdiaries.com. The link is in the description, and we shall see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama.